Well, many American broadcasters love Joe Biden, and that's their prerogative. Good luck to them. But it puts these networks in a very uncomfortable position of essentially barracking for the government rather than asking tough questions. Who needs actual journalism when you can just have stenographers blindly praising every move? And as we get closer to the US election, you are going to see a lot more of this sort of sleight of hand journalism everywhere on every issue. Which brings me to this conversation on MSNBC about the US economy off the back of some positive jobs data, even though the country is in the grips of an inflation and debt crisis. Yeah. When, you, when you cover these things, some months it'll be good, some months it'll be bad. The, the interesting thing is usually when you get a strong employment report, stocks go down mm. because business owners think, uh, you know what, yeah. they're, like, it's, they're going to demand more wages and all that. <laughs> It's very hard to parse this economy and find the systemically broken parts. Yeah. It's just a good economy. Yeah. And this is tough for people who don't want it to be so. Well, the panel made some bold claims about how great the economy was going, even though the country is suffering under $34 trillion of debt. A recent survey also found that 61% of Americans are in pretty major credit card debt, owing an average of $5,800, and 23% of those respondents say every month the debt worsens. But ignoring all that, this panel went on and as far as to argue that people should not even be able to make the argument that the economy has issues. It's all Republican spin, according to these distinguished journalists. Let's talk the politics of it now for the Democrats and Republicans. For the Republicans, what are the politics of it? They can't say the economy's bad. It's not. They can't. Well, they shouldn't. Let me rephrase. Oh, okay. They should not. But yeah. it won't stop them, and they'll say inflation. Mm -hmm. and, and here's the part that's hurting the Democrats, is that there still is a narrative out there that the economy is not strong. And now add that we're seeing certain things that don't fall into the inflation index, yeah. like gasoline and housing costs, that are still going up and people feel it. If Joe Biden is going to stand up and tell people doing it tough that it's all in their head and the economy is actually perfect, he will lose the election. But the worst take of all came from host Joy Reid, who made the argument that people were too stupid to notice how good the economy is because of so-called Biden bucks pouring into cities. My husband and I drove in today. Uh, my husband and brother and I, we were all in the car. And as we're driving, all you see is the Biden bucks being spent all over. You see infrastructure projects going from, key, from, you know, from Maryland to, to D.C. It's Biden bucks being spent everywhere. Tim Blair, I think for many people who would watch that segment, who might be doing it a bit tough, uh, who might be struggling just to kind of make the finances work on a week-to-week -week basis, would just think that they're living in, in bizarro land. I, I mean, it doesn't really make sense that the so-called Biden bucks means suddenly that the economy's <laughs> great for every single person. That's extraordinary, isn't it? I mean, uh, certainly for people like Joy Reid and her, her fellow wealthy leftists on their program, in their worlds, um, yeah, you know, the economy's fine. I mean, Reid is on millions to talk crap on MSNBC every night or every week. And uh, her friends are probably um, in a similar, similarly comfortable situation. But I think one of the tells in that, one of the, one of the things we've got to focus on, is that they're seeing the Biden bucks being spent through the windows of their car. They're not exactly on the <laughs> on the ground with these people. They're like, look at all those Biden bucks being spent and those those happy, jolly workers, you know, toiling away. It's it's a very different America. Uh, when you get, say, into um, ordinary supermarkets. And this is the case even in places like New York and Los Angeles, where they lock up things like toothpaste and shampoo because they're getting stolen. Yeah. You don't have that, that that incredible level of shoplifting, that level of basic crime on, on you know, getting, getting by and, and just living products if an economy yeah. is thriving. These people are insane. It, it is insane. I love that point about that they're doing it from the safety of their cars. And, Darren, mm. you've lived in New York, and I know that we've had a conversation yep. about crime in America. Um, I mean, tell me what you've seen. Are people just doing so good under Joe Biden? Are the Biden bucks, a state-funded, you know, um, infrastructure projects, is that really making all the difference? I think the experience that those presenters were talking about is so um, skewered. Um, I mean, they're traveling through presumably Georgetown, where most of the media people in Washington live, which is a very affluent, nice part of Washington. Um, it's very disconnected from the rest of the country. Uh, I mean, it's true that 
unemployment has recovered a bit since the pandemic, but it's the labor, labor market's now cooling in the US. There's high inflation, climbing interest rates. Um, there was a recent poll from the Wall Street Journal in which four in five respondents um, described the state of the economy as not so good or poor. It's the number one issue going into the presidential election, along with immigration. And my experience in New York, five years in New York, a year in LA, <clears throat> the US cities are post-pandemic, um, have irrevocably changed. I, I live there pre and post. Um, petty crime is, is soaring, violent crime is soaring. They have a serious homeless issue um, in New York and other major cities like LA and San Francisco. Um, all of the local bodegas and pharmacies and stuff where I lived in quite a nice part of, um, luckily for us, in, in Manhattan, as, as um, was just described there, all of the the goods on the shelves are locked up and you have to ring a bell and ask a shop assistant to come over even for a, a carton of ice cream and things like that. And I would see daily people walking in, in and out shoplifting and everyone just turns a, a blind eye to it. It's absolutely rife. And the subway trains are, are dangerous. Um, there's lots of knife attacks, gun crime. It's very underreported by the US media, by the way. It's really only the New York Post that reports on, on this really bad crime and quality of life issue that's happening in New York and other cities. And the New York Times stopped having a New York section in the New York Times. Um, so it's really only the Post and Fox, I think, to a degree, that they report on, the, on these issues. Um, and, and the big major other networks that uh, sit more to the left, like MSNBC and CNN, they just kind of ignore the issue and overlook it and barrack for one side of politics. But for a lot of Americans, life is quite uncomfortable at the moment. And they're they're struggling to, to make ends meet. And um, many of them are living on credit cards at the end of the month to um, pay for groceries and, and basic things that you wouldn't really expect them to be using credit cards for. So th those people on that program are so out of touch with, with reality. They, they really, really are. Yeah, yeah. And they were also laughing about it. They, they thought it was all one big joke. And I mean, at the end of the day, jobs data is one metric. Um, it might not even necessarily be the most important metric when you're looking at it at a, the macro level.